All right, SpaceX founder and chief designer Elon Musk is addressing the International Astronautical Conference in Guadalajara, Mexico, right now. Musk is plans to explore and colonize Mars and even to get into greater detail about the company's plans to relaunch or to launch the Red Dragon mission. That'll happen, he's hoping, in 2018. Let's listen in. So, as I said, refilling in orbit is, is one of the essential elements of this. Um, with, without refilling in orbit, you, um, you would have a half order of magnitude uh, impact roughly on on the cost. Um, by, by half order of magnitude, I, I think the audience mostly knows, but what that means is each, each order of magnitude is a factor of 10. So um, not, ref, not refilling in orbit uh, would mean a 500% roughly increase in the cost per ticket. Um, it, it also allows us to, to build a smaller vehicle and uh, lower the development cost, although this vehicle is quite big, but it would be much harder to build something that's five to 10 times the size. Um, and um, it, it also reduces the sensitivity of performance characteristics of the, of the booster rocket and, and tanker. So if there's a shortfall in uh, the performance of, of any of the elements, you can actually make up for it by having uh, one or two extra uh, refilling trips uh, to the spaceship. So this is it's very important for reducing the susceptibility of the system to a performance shortfall. And then uh, producing propellants on, on Mars is uh, actually you know, also very obviously important. Again, if, if we didn't do this, it would have at least a half order of magnitude increase in the, in the cost of a trip, so a 500% increase in the cost of the trip. Um, and it would be pretty absurd to try to build a city on, on Mars um, if, you, if your spaceships just kept um, staying on Mars and not going back to Earth. You have this like, massive graveyard, graveyard of ships you have to like, do something with them. Um, so it really wouldn't make sense to, to, um, uh, to leave your spaceships on Mars. You really want to build a propellant plant on Mars and send the ships back. So, and, and Mars happens to work out well for that because it has a CO2 atmosphere, it's got water ice um, in the soil, and with H2O and CO2, you can produce CH4, methane, and oxygen O2. So picking the right propellant is also important. Um, that sort of, if you think of this as maybe there's, there's three main choices. Um, and they have, the, they have their merits, but um, kerosene or rocket propellant grade kerosene, which is also what uh, jets use. Uh, ro rockets use a very expensive form, a highly refined form of, of jet fuel, essentially, which is a form of kerosene. The, the, it helps keep the vehicle size small, uh, but uh, because it's, it's a very specialized form of jet fuel, it's, it's quite expensive. Uh, the uh, reusability potential is lower. Um, very difficult to make this on Mars because there's no oil. Um, so really quite difficult to make the propellant on Mars. Um, and, um, and then propellant transfer is, 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 is pretty good, but not, not great. Hydrogen, although it has a high specific impulse, um, is, uh, is very expensive incredibly difficult to, to keep from boiling off because liquid hydrogen is very close to absolute zero um, as, as a liquid. So the insulation required is, is tremendous and the, uh, um, the, the cost of, uh, the, en the energy cost on Mars of producing and storing hydrogen is very high. So when we looked at the overall system optimization, uh, it was clear to us that, um, that methane actually was the, the, the clear winner. Um, so we, um, it, it would require maybe anywhere from you know, 50 to 60% of the energy on Mars to, re, to uh, refill propellant uh, using the, the propellant depot. And, and just the, the technical challenges are a lot easier. So, so we, think, we think methane's actually better on uh, you know, just really almost across the board. Um, and, and we started off initially thinking that hydrogen would make sense, but ultimately came to the conclusion that the, the best way to optimize the cost per unit mass to Mars and back um, is, is to use an all methane system, or, or technically deep cryomethalox. So those are the four, the four elements that need to be achieved. So, so um, whatever, whatever uh, system is designed, uh, whether by SpaceX or 
or, or anyone, we think these are the four features that need to be addressed in order for the system to, to really achieve a, a low cost per, a cost per ton to the surface of Mars. And this is a, this is a simulation of the overall system.